All right, everybody, this is gonna be an archery one-on-one -on -one school. I've been looking forward to this because this is Mark Schenker right here, uh, plays bass for kicks, and I'm an 80s hair heavy metal buff, so I did not wear my jean jacket with the cutoff t-shirt sewn on the back of it for this. But uh, pretty awesome, Mark's got a background in scuba diving, jujitsu, obviously, you know, banging heads on the stage, which is awesome, but he really wants to get into archery and to start working towards self-sustainment as a bow hunter as well. So this is gonna be a very rough, uncut version of me teaching Mark the basics from never shooting a bow, never drawing a bow, never holding a release. So this is gonna be a very good video for all of you out there who are maybe gonna pick up this for the first time and wanna maybe grab a few tools to either self-teach or for those of you out there who are a coach now or you're trying to you know, teach one of your kids or a spouse or whatever to get into archery, these are the basics and the building platform. So to start out, we're gonna pretend that the target is that way and I'm gonna work on a few things first. So Mark, go ahead and step on that line and pretend like the target is on that wall there. So the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is the importance of stance. So as an archer, we're eventually gonna work into a complete shot routine that talks about several building steps that I coach for any student, regardless of the skill level. And these are gonna be things that I want you to think about all the time, each and every single shot. Now for now, because you don't understand the mechanics of drawing a bow back and letting an arrow go, we're gonna work on a few of the basics, a few of the first basics to that shot process, but then after that, we're gonna simulate the second half of that shot routine. So I'm purposely right now not gonna talk about the entire shot routine because obviously, um, talking about acquiring a peep sight, for example, you're not gonna have a peep sight with a shot trainer. So I don't really want you to be going through all the steps, but for now, I'm gonna talk to you about a few important steps and then also talk to you about the things that I want you to think about just for now as we train with a shot trainer. So first and foremost, just like anything, I don't know, um, if you're on stage, if you've got a certain power stance, like <laughs> if you were to do a power stance, what would that be? Like, I think, you know, if you're gonna, okay, that's yeah, that's awesome. Um, a Ready little wider than what we're gonna work towards. So Ooh. if you pretend like that line going directly to the target is an arrow, what I want you to do is put the ball of your rear foot on the line, perfect, and then the, your big toe on the line as well. I'm gonna wanna make sure your feet are directly under your hips. So right there is a very good stance. And this is a neutral stance. So what I'll do when I put someone in that position is normally if you don't have a line, you can trace their feet. And that way, if you talk and they're moving around, they can always fall back into that position. But the importance of your stance is obviously gonna be your foundation, which is critical to balance and I always tell people that your feet have a direct connection to the brain. Um, in a lot of sports, reflexology is so critical, right? Yeah. And the reason reflexology is critical is because your feet, they really have amazing communication with what's going on with the rest of your body. So if your feet don't feel stable, there's no way that that front bow arm is going to be stable later as well. You know, what makes archery tough at some um, events or even in hunting later is when your footing is poor, you feel very unstable. And this comes down to this, this very first principle of first and foremost, you always have to have your feet in the right place. So right there, that's a great stance. Um, if anyone out there, doesn't have a line like this, I always recommend having some chalk. So I'm just gonna trace your feet right now in this position. So no matter what we're doing, you're always gonna step into that batter box, so to speak. 
Now the next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna work with Mark with a shot trainer and a shot trainer is first gonna need to be set up to draw length. Now when it comes to building his bow, I'll probably build the bow once we've fine tuned this draw length a little bit, but an easy way to do it, you can either watch one of the videos on our YouTube channel or go to the Knock on Archery website and just type in John Dudley, how to measure draw length. Um, for right now, the easy way to do it and describe it if you measure wingspan, divide by 2.5, you're gonna get super close. So what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be your bow handle for right now. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and grab that and go ahead and look towards the target. And I'm gonna soften this elbow a little bit and relax your hand a little bit too so that, that that's just naturally pressing against your hand. Okay, so preset, this was a guess. I feel like I'm pretty close. What I'm looking for here is if he just tried this for the first time, he's standing straight up and down. I always wanna make sure your shoulders are over your hips and your hips are always over your feet. So if you started to lean back like this, that's gonna be a problem. So I always want your front shoulder to be over your front foot. Good. And I'm gonna make sure his elbow's soft. Obviously a brand new archer that puts their arm out like this, very hyper extended. Later on, they're gonna end up having string interference. So right there is a very good position. So I'm gonna take this away from you. Good. And I'm going to give you your first release. Okay, so this right. is a Silverback Plus, which is a tension activated release. And what I'm gonna do, yep, perfect. I'm gonna use the lanyard. This is a safety lanyard, especially for someone who has never done this before. And might and, drop it. Yep, we're <laughs> gonna put that on there so you're good to go. Okay, so you can see when you're holding that, right, actually right now, you're doing a perfect job of somewhat making a fist and that release is over the center part of his knuckles. And a lot of people do that. The first time they put those on, act like they're going to a street fight and treat them like a pair of brass knuckles. We don't want that. So you're holding it the correct way. So the release is between his index finger and his middle finger. But what I want you to do is instead of having a, re a release hand that is shaped like this because he's kind of making a fist, I want you to lengthen those fingers out to where your hand is flat, just like this. And I always want this release to be right down this row of your knuckles, okay? The flat part right yep, here? Yep, exactly. Okay. The reason that's important is when you have your hand flat like this and we draw back, a flat hand is gonna be way more comfortable on the side of your face. Exactly, that's perfect right there. Okay, now go ahead and make a slight fist like you did before, exactly, and try to do the same thing. And you'll feel like now- That's weird. Yeah, it feels different. And what most people would do in that, um, when once they make a slight fist or round that hand, what most people then do is start to put that behind the jaw so that it would feel comfortable. Yeah, they'll go further back there. And at that point, your draw length is gonna need to be much too long. And you're also gonna have way too much facial pressure on the arrow later. So. Just keep in mind, anytime you grab your release, you're gonna curl your fingers over. I want your hand to be flat, just like that. Okay. Now you're always gonna have to hold this, this thumb button down with this release anytime you draw the bow back or if you let the bow forward because this is the safety, okay? okay. So if your thumb is off that and you go to let down, your poundage is gonna get higher on your bow and it's gonna end up firing. So anytime you draw back, anytime you go down with a Silverback Plus, you always have to have the safety press down, okay? Now from there, what you'll notice with this handheld release is you've got a separation between your index finger and your middle finger. So you've got a V right there. Now this time when you put this on your face, I want your index finger underneath your jawbone and this middle finger will be above your jawbone. So if my finger was your jawbone, that's what you're gonna feel right there. So go ahead and, perfect. 
That's exactly what we're looking for. Now the importance to this right here is you'll notice that this hook position, when you anchor this way, is gonna put his arrow right here in the safe part of his face. And this is critical because if you teach someone to anchor too low or too high, then that arrow is either gonna be down against his chin here, or it's gonna be up here, which is gonna, quite frankly, he's just gonna feel like his anchor point is way too high. And it's, you're never gonna feel the same thing on your face because you don't have repeatability. But if you just always remember index finger under the jawline, middle finger will be above, hand will be flat. So as you draw back and that stops, all you're doing is coming over to that position, okay? That looks perfect right there. Awesome, now go ahead and relax. Let your arms down. That's a really good job. Now, one of, the, <laughs> now one of the things that you might try to do or start to do later as you're pulling a bow, and especially once you are trying to think about the back sight or the peep sight and your front sight, which is what you aim with, a lot of people start to try to pull their head towards that peep to look at it. Okay, so what I want you to think about is that your head is on a swivel and you can swivel your head to the left or to the right, but I don't want you taking your head forward towards your shoulder and I don't want you leaning your head back and trying to find your anchor position here. I always want you to stand proud, you know, face that target. And when you raise that hand up and you come to your full draw position, your posture is going to be proud again shoulders over your hips hips over your feet and just like if i grab this ball on my hat you can turn your head towards the target or you can turn and look behind you but once you're going to draw your bow i don't want you going forward or back you know think of it as if i grab some of your hair and just tied that up to the ceiling <laughs> which it might reach it might. <laughs> yeah. If you went to go forward or back, you're going to pull that hair out. Mm -hmm. So just remember, your head can pivot, which is fine. Just don't go forward to the string. Okay? Okay. All right. Great. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and put that back. That'll... Perfect. That's very good. Okay, go ahead and let your arm down. Now with archery, when you grip your bow, one of the things that's important is that you're not trying to pick your bow up and push it to the target and draw back at the same time. I also don't want you to have to lean back and pull like this. We're gonna adjust the poundage of your bow to where you can do that exact same motion which you just did, which is take your bow arm and raise it straight up to the target and this release hand will still be forward on your string. Let me have your release hand. This will still be here. So you've raised your bow to the target and then now you're gonna draw this back to right there, perfect. Okay, so go ahead and relax your arms to your side one more time. Bring them up together, stop, draw back, perfect. I'm gonna lift this elbow up just a little bit right now. Great job, okay, right. that's perfect. So. I'm gonna let you rest for a second. And one of the things that's critical when you're teaching someone archery for the first time is that even though some of these movements seem so small and minor, it's a lot like lifting weights for the first time or yoga. If you go through these simple movements enough and never release tension, then eventually when we actually start making some shots, you're gonna already have some exertion just from doing some of these simple exercises. So if you're teaching someone to do archery, tell them to rest and explain something a little bit further. So what I'd like to talk with you about in regards to when I told you how to address the target with your bow and draw, when we talk about perfect archery form, perfect archery form is if you're standing with your feet directly under your hips, your hips are under your shoulders, and you raise both of your arms up to where they're shoulder level, and you're looking forward, you can pivot your head towards your front bow hand, and if you bend your front hand simply at the elbow and invert it to your face, this is my exact technique shooting a bow. Now you can make it extremely complicated by 
hitching your hip, pushing, pulling. But the reality is, if we want to be the most repeatable on a target, we have to be repeatable right here in this little space. So by just having this type of technique here to where we draw the bow stops, we come to our anchor position, we have perfect technique, our shoulder isn't high, our elbow isn't too bent, so it's just gonna be really important when you're working with this shot trainer, and I know you're gonna to have to hold the string on with your finger when you're here, but I just want you to always pick that release hand up to the target, point it at the target, and then just pull back a little bit till you feel a little bit of that tension on the string, and you don't have to pull the string in half, but once you've got tension on the string, then go ahead and find your anchor position just like we just did in the air. So go ahead and give me two with just air right now. Good job. Perfect. Raise the target, good. Draw back, those stops, perfect. Okay, and one thing I'm gonna tell you when you're doing this with a bow is if your elbow's down when you're pulling, you're not gonna have as much leverage. So when you come to here, yep, your elbow is gonna be up and you're gonna just think about driving that elbow to the wall behind you. Perfect, till it stops, there you go. And that's gonna be good. Yep, the importance of that is when you're in this position, do you feel this tension that's more mm -hmm. here at the top of your shoulder blade? Yeah. Okay, so if this elbow is down here, now you have more load lower on the, your lat. Yep. So you're pulling more bicep lat. So to pull more with the back and the entire scapular system and the rhomboid, if that elbow is above your shoulder, you're gonna be able to have more leverage, okay? Oh, okay. Yeah, I could definitely feel that, so. All right, so here we go. This is your bow. And you're gonna just put that in there. And you may have Ooh. to, well, some of the first over. thing, exactly, you're gonna kinda have to hold that with your finger, just like that, so just hold your middle finger on there for now. Okay. So yep, raise your bow to the target, good. Perfect, bow stops, good. You're gonna have to, I'm gonna shift your fingers here, because your middle finger needs to go there, yep. The string at first is a little bit, okay, so stay right there for a second, Mark. Do you notice, one of the first things we talked about exactly was your index finger under mm -hmm. your jaw and right there you'd already gone above the jaw. And again, when this index finger is under the jaw, if you're instructing, you're gonna notice this D loop is between the chin and the corner of the lip. So that's perfect. Okay, go ahead and let that down. And I'm just gonna have you do that a few times just so you kind of get the feel of being able to Exactly, hold that on there. Good. Maybe I need to loosen this a little bit for you so it's not so far forward on your hand. Okay, so you can see here, we're just going through some of these basic movements and some of these movements, although for right now, they seem you know, very simple and almost very repetitive. Good job. Great. Perfect. Remember, thumb always on the safety, okay? Gonna let them do this one more time. Double checking this. Okay. All right. One more time? One more time. Because right, I'm gonna address one more thing. Super good. Yeah, it'd be Decide easier to hold it with your okay. middle finger. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, Go ahead, go back to that position really quick one more time, because I just want to address one thing, which is going to be one last subject. OK. 
Okay, so do you notice right here on your grip how you have space underneath your hand in the grip? Mm -hmm. Okay, so anytime you grip a bow, and we'll do this when the bow's at rest, but I always want to make sure your hand is up against the bottom of that riser. Okay. So when you've done this a few times, you've kind of been here some, you've kind uh -huh. of been there some, and and that'll actually give you different highs and lows on the target because you're changing heel pressure on the riser. Okay. okay. So just, yeah, pay attention to that. All right, now go ahead and let down one more time. And I'm gonna take both these from you. Well, you can keep that. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about quick is your grip. So obviously we've talked about stance and your stance is the first thing that you're always gonna think about. Every time I'm gonna address a target, I look down at my feet. So first thing that I do, look at my feet. And with each of these steps that we talk about, which your shot sequence is really gonna be, you know, five things that I want you to ask yourself, does it look right? Does it feel right? So the first thing is going to be your stance. You're going to look down at your feet. You know, even if you feel right, if you look down and that front foot's forward, wait, that doesn't look right. My front foot's ahead of my back foot. So it looks right and I feel secure, so I feel right. Now going a little bit further when it comes to stance, the importance about that stance is your stance, since your feet are connected to your hips, your hips through your torso are connected to the, your shoulders, your stance is gonna also determine the angle of your torso this way, okay? So in this position, which I've taught you in a neutral stance, when you raise that bow, you now have clearance for your string to travel, okay? And that's because your upper body, your shoulders, they're, they're mirroring that same position of your hips. If you close your hips off or close your stance to where now my shoulders are running directly in line with the target, if I'm trying to aim on the target, now I've lost all clearance of my string down my arm. The other thing too is in this position when I try to aim back to the target, now I've lifted this shoulder out of the socket and the longer I hold, the more likely this shoulder is to creep forward. Whereas when I'm simply in this position, which is three inches different on the ground, now when I raise that bow, this shoulder is able to pack down. It's not here where it's up and it's gonna creep, it's now here, okay? However, if you open that stance too much to where you're addressing the target like this, and my, you know, my shoulder position is running this way, now this triangle is very sharp and when I draw back, this elbow is gonna to wanna to be this way. So now I have this massive triangle to where I'm never gonna be able to pull properly. So that stance dictates your shoulder presentation, okay? So it's always mm -hmm. critical that your feet look right from a point of view of, if they look right there, your shoulder positioning here is gonna look right and you're gonna have the clearance that you need for the string. Okay, so the next thing is gonna be your grip because immediately after my stance, I always grip my bow and focus on my grip and it's gonna be the same thing. Does it look right and does it feel right? Okay, so with a bow grip, what I do is I actually raise my hand slightly and I tell the ground to stop, okay? So just like if I were to stand here, tell you to stop, or if I'm looking at you and I'm gonna say, hey, stop. Your thumb is gonna be at a natural 45 degree angle. And these are movements that happen without you having to force them in position. I wouldn't say stop like this, and I wouldn't say stop like that. If you do either one of those things, you'll feel like, wait, that actually puts pressure. I can feel pressure and I'm having to turn it there or this way I'm having to turn it that way and I also feel pressure opposite. But if you're just doing natural movements to where again, you don't feel like you're adding muscle to make a movement happen, then it's gonna be more repeatable. Our bone structure and our anatomy is gonna be way more repeatable than adding in muscle. No different than going in to the gym one day and you feel like you can move a ton of weight and then the next day you feel like you can move much less weight because you're tired 
Same can, thing can happen when you go to practice archery, mm -hmm. especially when you're starting new, because chances are if you like it and you want to do it tomorrow, you're going to be sore tomorrow. So the less we rely on these nuances that add muscle that we really don't need to be used, the more likely we are going to, to not re be repeatable each and every day. So I tell my bow to stop, which puts my thumb at that, at that 45 degree angle. Okay. And then what I do is I'll slide my hand to the bottom of that riser and I'll lean down on the riser as I'm raising it up so that I have even pressure on this palm from the saddle all the way to the heel. So in other words, I'm not doing this, which is a high wrist. And I'm also not low wristing it like this and adding extra heel pressure. Because again, any of these differences in pressures like this at full draw, they're gonna change impact down range. Now I refer to this to lean on the door. Funny enough, this is the one time I don't have a door. But what I always say, this is probably, you've done this backstage enough times. So if I'm gonna sit here and have a drink and kick it with one of my buddies and lean on something, I'm going to utilize the saddle of my thumb down to where my thumb connects into my wrist. And I'm also going to relax my hand enough to where I've evenly distributed that weight. You know, so if I'm here, I can do this all the time. I actually don't feel like I'm utilizing strength mm -hmm. to do this. If I did this, this already feels unnatural. If I put too much heel pressure, it feels unnatural. I wouldn't grab it like this also feels unnatural. Okay. I wouldn't do like a straight hand like this also feels unnatural. So go ahead and do that same thing. Raise your bow arm up, scoot towards it. Yep. So your thumb is going to probably be more like that, but exactly. And you don't need to curl your fingers. If you're just allowing your weight to rest on that again, perfect leaning on the door mm -hmm. and you can find a position to where you feel like you're utilizing less strain overall. And that's what I want you to do on the bow. I want you to feel like that front bow is pushing against you and it's in a position to where that front hand can be relaxed. Now, one of the things you're doing right here is do you see how you're coming across to the other side of your palm? So let me have your hand, you're over to here. I only want you to stay from your lifeline of your hand this way. Okay. So from the saddle of your thumb to where your thumb connects to that pad, right there. Don't cross the lifeline. Yep. Okay. So be much better. Yep. There you go. Easy. Feels natural. It really does. See, just need a red solo cup. You're good. <laughs> All right. So step into your box. And so to kind of take this principle a little ways further, what I'll do is I'll then go in front of the student, go ahead and raise your arm towards the target. Just like if you were to draw your bow back, remember your thumb's going to be at a 45 hands going to be relaxed. So at this point, I'm going to actually lean on Mark and say, okay, do you feel this? Mm -hmm. This is what your grip should feel like. So I'm, I'm implementing my same grip position as a coach onto Mark so that he can see this feels right. Go ahead and relax your hand. Good. Okay. Now, if you go here, do you feel already that feels bad? Okay. I already bad. know it feels unnatural. Yeah. So That's if weird. you touch your palm to here, can you already feel pressure here now that you've turned that hand in? It feels uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah. So it's not natural. Thumb at 45, relax that wrist back. We're going thumb heel to thumb heel. Sorry, Caleb, relax your hand. Good, big difference. So even with your fingers like this, mm -hmm. go ahead and do that same thing. Can you see that you're utilizing strength yes. here to stretch those fingers back? Yes. Again, could, that's tension yeah. and tension is gonna magnify movement to target. So relaxation of that front hand, perfect. Okay. So now the steps are going to be stance, grip. 
one of the things I'm going to do quick just to help you out is since you're not shooting yet, I'm just going to wrap, go ahead and take your index finger out. I'm just going to wrap a piece of tape around this so that you don't have to worry with a shot trainer, at least for right now, of keeping that in there. Okay. It is important that you make sure that you're keeping your finger on the safety. Always have that squeezed down. It's gonna be critical, even with the shot trainer, that you teach that, because if you don't, it's ingraining a different way. It's kind of like, I don't know, if you're teaching someone to shoot a gun, even though you don't have a magazine in there, you're gonna always have it on safe, right? right. So yeah, of course. safety has to be on. Okay. All right, so go ahead and raise up. Yep, draw back. When you feel some tension, it'll, you'll feel a little bit better. So you can feel where your grip is right here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, is that the correct place? It feels okay. Let me fix it. And you see how you're fully wrapped? So I'm gonna go there. Oh, okay. Feel, yeah, the, difference? feel the difference? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so I'm going there. Good, fingers are relaxed. You can also see here now we've got some space before he was fully grabbing the grip. So. Right here, this front hand is in a very good position, very relaxed. This forearm is now gonna be relaxed. This elbow position is good. And if you look at this position, this is really nice, Mark. Thank um, you. Yeah, this is really good. So you can see from here, now we finally have, a, we're gonna have a good clearance of the string and the arrow as it comes forward. Whereas earlier with this grip position, we had very little space here which would have ended up resulting in hitting your bow arm. All right, that looks awesome. Keep your finger on the safety. Go ahead and relax down for a second. Okay, I'm gonna have you do that three more times. Okay. I'm gonna fix this to there. Good, very good, awesome. This looks really good. Okay. Index fingers above your jaw right now. You're a little high. There you go. Good job. One of the reasons I don't give too many steps on this initial instruction is because obviously right now he's thinking about multiple things and sometimes putting all those together even though they seem simple you start to miss small little nuances like that so learning with this shot trainer is so critical because he's not having to fight the dynamics of the bow in addition to having to think about these steps so it's easy for me to say okay hold things really the tension that's being applied with the shot trainer is really up to how much tension you're putting on it Whereas if you just have enough to feel things and you're not having the full load of the bow on the front hand, mm -hmm. it allows us to make adjustments without having to let the bow down or worry about torquing the bow and, you know, ended up having a, an, a catastrophe. So let's go ahead and do this one more time. All right. Let me just get this out of the way for now. Good. Just gonna do that, relax this, there you go. Nice, okay, go ahead and relax for a second. Okay, so at this point, what I'm gonna tell you, Mark, is when you start to present to the target and you're gonna draw that release hand back, I want you to incorporate a principle that I call mirroring, okay? Okay. So mirroring is when you raise your bow to the target again, your thumb should be at a 45, because you're telling it to stop. So when you raise up, I want you to mirror the position, the angle of your release hand with the angle of that thumb. So when you raise up, these two are here. That way you're not starting to pull back with this release hand turned down like this to where you're having to turn and then invert. And I also don't want you fully inverted to where when you pull back, you don't feel what you're doing and you have to adjust your face. So what mirroring does is essentially it puts your rear release hand at 45 and your front thumb is gonna be at 45. So as I draw back and the bow stops, I'm able to just bring that release hand right into the position that we talked about. Okay. 
There you go. Much better. Good job. Yeah, that's going to make it way easier for you to feel the index and middle finger rather than pull back and only feel the middle or the index finger sometimes because you're too flat or invert too much to where you're feeling a pinky or a ring finger rather than feeling index and middle finger. I could say that the mirroring idea, I mean, I can, I can see it very clearly from here. So it's much easier to get an idea that, um, that I'm on the right plane between what you just taught me about the thumb and the, and the angle of this hand. Okay. It's very easy to see. And if I don't do it, it's not because I can't see it. Yeah. It's because yeah. I'm not used to it. Yep. So. Good job. But that's definitely easier than not having a tangible sort I'm of gonna, I'm in the space freeze relationship. Right there. Just freeze. Okay, come right here. So if you look at his posture, and this starts to happen right here, Caleb would be good. So if you look at his posture, as people start to learn archery, he's starting to lean back. His rear shoulder is starting to slide behind the hips, which just this natural motion of doing this, doing this, you start to naturally start to just push your hips slightly forward. And he's just kind of starting to settle into like, I call it a pocket. You know, you kind of just settle back like this. So if you're teaching, or especially if you're learning, again, as soon as you look at your feet, shoulders over your feet, critical step. You know, I'm, I'm just like this. I've raised my bow to the target, you know, because otherwise your head starts to go back too. Exactly. Doesn't take much. Okay. So so over the target. Good. Awesome. Relax this hand. There you go. Good job. Bring this up a little bit. Okay, this looks excellent. Excellent right, right. here. Good job. Thanks, John. Yeah, All that's, right, that's so pretty. we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to get some pictures um, of Mark so that I can make sure he has these to fall back onto. And we're going to go into the next step. Okay, so now I'm going to take the release and I'm going to take the shot trainer. We're going to switch spots, Mark. And I'm going to step in these size tens. <laughs> what do you got? Nine and a half. Nice, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to just show you now um, what you're going to be doing. So I'm going to, and with this release, you'll eventually learn, like if you turn it back just for right now, you'll be able to kind of keep it in that position. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to rise up into my full draw position. Again, my thumb is on the safety. And so we're going to do everything that we talked about, stance, grip. This is our anchor, which is actually your third part of your shot sequence. So stance, grip, anchor, anchor's good. Now what I'm gonna have you do is, I'm gonna have you let your thumb off the safety and I'm gonna have you keep pulling your elbow to the back wall behind you until the shot goes off. Okay. And then once it does, if this doesn't close automatically, you just push the jaw down until it clicks and you're good. So okay. I'll just show you, I had already, closed it out of habit, but okay. you just take your middle finger, push that down, and you're ready to go. So, you know, stance is good, grip, anchor, thumb off the safety, pull the elbow to the back wall behind you. Okay. So right now, I have this release set to where this release is gonna, it's gonna make you pull a little bit harder against the back wall than what, where we're gonna end up. But I actually want, because you haven't done this before, one, I wanna make sure that if you're pulling too hard at the beginning and let off the safety, it's not going off. Um, but I also want you to pull, have to pull a little bit more because I'm trying to magnify the feeling that I want you to oh, have. I gotcha. And as we progress, I'll be able to lower the tension to this to where when you let off the safety, it's gonna take less pulling force to get it to fire. Okay. okay. So I'll give right. you these two things, let you get in the position. For those of you new to this, um, 
There's a couple different ways you can set up one of our tension base releases in order to do this exercise. Either use a hand scale, um, if you're gonna use it on your bow, draw your bow back, see what that holding weight is at full draw, and then set the release to fire. I normally start around five pounds over that holding weight. You'll be able to reduce that down once you really get comfortable with how much you're pulling before you're letting off that safety. This is great. Okay, you're very deep there. See how you're, you're Oh, there I got you. you. Go. I good got job. You. Okay, good. Just good. You need to make sure you're holding your release with that index finger. Good. You don't want no pressure there. And then just pull that back elbow. Perfect. Great job. Okay. Great job. And what were you saying about? Uh, it's closed already. It's oh, good okay. to go. Okay. Yep. Depending on how hard you're pulling through, and this one's set up to where you're really having to work for it, sometimes it'll auto close itself. Okay. So with your release hand, just so you know, I have, when I'm pulling back, there's about 65% pressure on my index finger, and then the balance would be on my middle finger. The other fingers are kind of just there. Okay. But you're really pulling with these two fingers. Good job. Perfect. There you go. Awesome. Interesting. Like this. Yeah. This is great. Good job. Good. Elbow back, okay? Yep, Okay. that's good. good. Now one of the things that's critical and it's natural as well is there's going to be things that regress because his attention is on other things that are going to progress. So obviously if you have a brand new person or if you're brand new, you know, if you're trying to think about too many things at once, then, you know, don't be overcritical to where you cancel your shot because everything wasn't per uh, perfect. So like right now, honestly, Mark's front grip is a little bit off and you know, he's kind of coming off the safety a lot faster than what we're going to down the road. But he's mentally, I know he's just thinking about, okay, I'm getting to shoot this release for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of want to let off the safety. I want to pull hard enough until my bow goes off. Um, but this time I do want you to think about that safety as it's a movement of the hand. So you can let off the safety slow and smooth and it's gonna cause less movement back here. So I want you to be able to let off that safety smooth and then pull through rather than go like this. Okay. okay? Because when you let off the safety too fast, you're also relaxing those other fingers. Okay. So not that I'm a guitar player, but if I was, <laughs> I would feel like if you're coming off a fret too hard to go, yeah. you kind of need to know how much you can let off of it to move yeah. to that spot without having everything else move. So if you can think about that and let the thumb off without making the rest of the hand move, then okay. that would be Yeah, critical. economy of motion in, in guitar playing is what I would say. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. so economy of, motion. economy of motion. And remember, I want that middle finger. Yeah, relax these fingers because, yeah, these two fingers are going to be the ones perfect. There you go, now let off your safety. Good. Keep pulling that elbow through. Nice. All right, at this point, this is a very good place as a student for you to just go through the dry runs, okay? For any type of student, my wife, my son, I can tell you that they started out with this string and these first fundamentals of stance, grip, anchor position we did have the mirroring we're letting off our safety smooth and continuing to pull that elbow to the back wall this is something that you can implement for a day at least before you move on to those next steps a very good practice and one that i recommended and made my wife and my son do was if you're someone who watches tv have your shot training and your release right there anytime a commercial series comes on execute shots for the entire set of commercials. It's like, for whatever reason, it seems to always work. And honestly, that gives me, you know, 
12 to 18 minutes of practice time for most people who are just watching a TV show. Um, if you're binge watching Netflix, it kind of sucks. You can't do it. But if you made shots while um, your partner or someone is like trying to figure out what to watch next, you're probably going to get an hour of practice in. <laughs> um, so either one of those things will work. So we're going to go ahead and allow Mark to make some shots and just get 30 minutes to an hour in of just doing this. And depending on how he progresses, we may pick up a little bit later than that. And we're gonna come back to the next step when it, in regards to the shooting. But I think while you're doing that, I'm getting ready to build Mark's bow. Right, <laughs> awesome.